The key influencers visual lets you analyze a metric you are interested in. It looks at patterns in your data to try and explain what influences your metric to be a particular value or what influences it to go up or down. In this tutorial, we will be specifically looking at how you can analyze metrics that are measures or summarized columns. Let's imagine we are running a sales organization that sells cloud services. Every salesperson in our organization has a sales target for each quarter. We are interested in analyzing our variance to target, which tells us how much above or below their sales target a salesperson was. Ideally, everyone would have a very high variance to target, which would indicate we are beating our numbers every fiscal quarter. As a sales manager, I'm interested in finding out what patterns in the data are associated with a high variance to target. Perhaps we are consistently doing really well within certain industries or across certain products. So let's go ahead and start plotting the visualization. The first thing we need to do is choose a field to analyze. We have already created a measure in our model that is called variance to target. This is defined as the sum of closed revenue minus the sum of our target. Let's start by adding that to the visualization as the metric we are analyzing. This updates the question inside the visual to what influences variance to target to increase or to decrease. I'm going to leave it as increase. We mentioned some fields that might matter are things like maybe the industry or the service that's being sold. Let's go ahead and add this in. And behind the scenes, what Power BI is going to do is it's going to run a linear regression. And we can actually see, this is interesting, we were not able to find any influencers. One tip in these situations is to change the visualization into a table. It's easier to take a look at the data in a table form and see what is going on. So here we can see the actual data that we're trying to run the analysis on. The problem here is we do not have enough data to run the analysis. In order for a regression to find patterns in the data, it needs lots of repeated observations. So for example, if we were interested to learn something about manufacturing, the machine learning model would need lots of examples of manufacturing to see what happens with variance to target every time manufacturing is true compared to when manufacturing isn't the industry in question. Okay, so what should we do next? We need to think about what is the level that we would like to run the analysis on. With unsummarized columns, that is pretty easy, as we always run the analysis at the parent table level. With measures, though, this requires a little bit more thought, as we have to define the level of the analysis ourselves. At the beginning, I mentioned that every salesperson has a target assigned at a fiscal quarter level. So what I probably want to compare is variance to targets across all of my different salespeople for all of my different fiscal quarters. I like to frame the question is what are my influencers attributes of? In this case, industry represents the industry the salesperson was affiliated with in a given fiscal quarter. Service sold? is the products the salesperson was responsible for during a given fiscal quarter and so on. And we can also see that the data grows and we now have lots and lots of examples of let's say manufacturing customers. The machine learning model will now have lots of examples to see if a salesperson is more likely to have a high variance to target when they're aligned let's say with manufacturing versus when they're not. Okay, so let's go ahead and convert this back into the key influencers visualization. And we have some findings here, but something also doesn't look quite right. Fiscal year is being treated as an influencer. And we don't really want this behavior. This isn't very actionable. Let's say we know we have a higher variance to target in FY18 Q3. There isn't really much we can do about this or maybe learn from this, but we need fiscal quarter to ensure our analysis runs at the right level. So what can we do? This is where this expand by field comes in handy. We can drag things like salesperson and fiscal quarter 
down into expand by. This does not change the level of analysis, but the visualization has stopped treating these fields as influencers. So let's take a closer look at our influencers. Our top influencer is service sold is developer tools. This means that when a salesperson is aligned to selling developer tools, they on average have a variance to target of about $10,000 higher than salespeople who are not aligned to developer tools. The visualization on the right hand side reinforces this insight. What we are actually doing is finding the average of our measure for each value of service sold. We are computing the average based on the granularity of the measure that we saw when we had the table. So if we jump back to this table for a second, we can take a closer look at that. The key influencers visualization is computing the average of variance to target when service sold is, for example, compute, developer tools, media, and so on. This gives us this result of this right-hand side bar chart. When service sold is developer tools, the average variance to target is over $15,000. When it's not developer tools, so any other service sold, the average is given by the dotted line, and we can see it's just over $5,000. The difference between this green bar and the red dotted line is our influencer score of 10,000. I'm going to add a couple of more factors that I think might matter in explaining variance to target. And every time I add one of these factors into the visualization, Power BI actually reruns the regression from scratch and recalculates all of the different factors. Another tip is to always double check any numeric columns you might be using as explained by fields in the key influencers visualization. If you have a default summarization on your numeric column, that will kick in. For example, I added tenure, which represents how long a salesperson has been with the company. By default, tenure sum summarization is sum, but I wanna go ahead and change these to do not summarize in order to get the right sort of analysis that I want. We can also see that we get different kinds of analysis depending on the type of data we have. For example, Average deal size is a numeric field. We are told that when the average deal size increases by about $10,000, which is the standard deviation of average deal size, variance to target increases by over $600. On the right hand side, we can see a scatter plot is shown, as that's a more intuitive experience than seeing individual data bars for every unique deal size. But what happens if the relationship between a numeric field and the target is not linear. The visualization automatically runs correlation tests and changes the right-hand side visualization to match the data. So let's see that in practice. Let's take a look at tenure, which is how long the salesperson has been with the company. And we can see we have found an influencer where if tenure is between four to five years, our variance to target increases by about 5,000. Tenure is a numeric field, but we detected the relationship is not linear. We can see the bar graph jumps around of increasing and then decreasing and then increasing again. We therefore decided to automatically create bins for the variable and visualize things using this bar chart instead. Finally, top segments lets us see what combination of variables results in high variance to target rather than looking at each factor individually. Each bubble here represents a segment. The height of the bubble tells us how high the variance to target was, and the size represents how many observations of data the segment has. Let's jump into segment two, which is both quite high and quite large. Segment two is made up of salespeople aligned to the manufacturing industry that have a win-loss ratio of higher than 70%. When these two factors are true, the variance to target is on average about $17,000 for a salesperson in a given fiscal quarter. This is over $10,000 higher than the average variance to target we see, which is $6,000 in the data set.